but anyway, obviously our, our guys are excited. Uh, they get to this point in time of the year and, um, it's time to start games for real. I think they're ready for it. They're they're eager. Um, I know they've been excited to get to this point and counting down the days. And they've done a, a very good job of putting in the work and, and developing and working together. And obviously we have still a long ways to go and a lot to learn, which uh, I think can now take the biggest jumps through uh, outside competition. So we're looking forward to tomorrow night. And, and obviously, uh, as we move on later in the week, it'll be great to have Coach Ryan back before he flies west for the winter um, in, in the building on Friday night. So we're looking forward to this week. Coach, Coach uh, notice that Chucky Hepburn was listed as a potential starter. What have you seen from him since the exhibition that made you want to put him into that starting lineup? Well, it's um, first of all, he was out for two weeks prior to the exhibition, so um, uh, other people had to kind of take the reins, so to speak, during that time when he was out and, and Lauren was out the exact same time, ironically. But uh, you know, he, I think he's he's done a lot of good things. He's obviously a freshman, so there's still some uh, freshman miscues from time to time, but that's to be expected. But I, I just like the how he his composure, how he handles himself in that position um obviously his vision his you know he's he's natural at it um he has a really good feel for it and, and i think the other older guys have helped him feel comfortable in that position so um you know i think over the course of watching him through the summer and the fall and then uh, here uh you know in the last three four weeks of practice uh he's put in that self himself in that position to to get a, a crack at that to start Greg, can you can you walk us through the the process behind having Bo come back for this game and and, and also some personal feelings? Have you known the guy for probably 124 years? Maybe. I <laughs> yeah, I, I think you know it was uh, you know in terms of opportunities to have him come back here since he's retired ha have been few because he's typically gone west by this time. He um, I didn't think he could play golf every day of retirement, but he's proven me wrong at least. Most of the days end in why he plays, um, but uh, so he's able to do that, and, and obviously, to I had to convince him this uh, this summer that he needed to stay a little bit longer. Uh, he didn't know the game day at the time that we were going to play Green Bay when we had just figured out the schedule of, of this Friday. So uh, he was giving me all these reasons when he was going back and all this. I said, Coach, you got to stay until. Uh, the Green Bay game and be able to watch Will's team play in person and and obviously ours and he's been around a little bit this fall. Um, he was at our scrimmage down at uh, Whitewater with Loyola, so um, I always enjoy having him around. Played some golf with him this summer, so um, you know it's it, the pandemic last year. Obviously, we didn't get a chance and to have anybody there. Um, I think he had a cardboard cutout in the crowd, but. Uh, it, it'll be good before he, I believe he probably takes off the very next day or maybe even later that night to, to head for warm weather. So, um, like I said, it would be good to see him on Friday night. Got a question back there. Greg, you have three point guards on your roster that weren't with you last year. Um, typically you have a veteran like who, who can help coach up those guys. What's the challenge this year with, with Chucky, with Lauren, and even Jacoby to not have a veteran point guard on the roster? How do you get them up to speed so they play the offense how you want it played and kind of what's your balancing act over these games to kind of get those three in a rhythm well i think um the veteran maybe you forgot about ben was is brad you know i think brad can help in that regard and has helped in that regard uh, you know even though he hasn't played that position for you know maybe since his freshman year full time but just those experiences that he's had tyler's had johnny's had a few of them in his freshman year and I think Jacoby going through two years in the ACC at Wake Forest, uh, I see that experience helping. Uh, I hear what he says in the huddles and what he talks about, and I think that maturity and experience that he's garnered, it, albeit at another place, has helped. And then you still have to live it and walk through it every day. So Chucky and Lauren both are going to have to go through those experiences and, and learn on the fly, so to speak. And there's going to be some bumps in the road. There already has been, and and we'll continue to help them grow and learn from it. Um, but like I said, I'm excited for both of them because they both have um, you know extremely high potential. Um, but we're just got to get some some experience under their belt right now. Looking at your game tomorrow, um, as you've been preparing, what are some specifics that stand out about St. Francis, and what are you hoping to learn about your team in the game? 
Well, I think for St. Francis, number one, they've got a lot of new guys, um, quite a few transfers, and, and the other um, bit of their roster is freshmen. So there's not a lot of last year's uh, video that can be of help for, for this year. So I think the, the specifically this time of year, you're really focused on yourself uh, more so than what the opponent um, – is doing you know we'll we we have information on them and we've prepared the best we can given the knowledge we have and the information we have but you're really trying to implement and apply your system to whatever a team does offensively and handle that so um you know it wasn't just the last couple of days of preparation you know the things that we've worked on will apply to every game through the preseason so um I, i'm excited to watch and see how our guys react and respond to it and you know, get a chance to go out and play in front of fans. I know they're they're excited for that, um, and show how they've grown. And you know, I thought we grew from the the, the close scrimmage. I thought we grew from the exhibition game. Uh, I think every opportunity we have a chance to to play outside competition is going to help because it's going to stimulate us. It's gonna it's going to cause some adversity. It's going to cause some stress, which is good. And, and that's how we'll grow and and prepare as we go forward into the season. Greg, uh, Marcus Ilver's dad played at St. Francis. Is it coincidence that you guys are playing them? Is there some sort yeah, of... Yeah, no, okay. that was total okay. coincidence, yeah. And I think he, one of his best friends is on the roster, too, another player from Estonia. But no, there there wasn't uh, there wasn't any back office, let's connect this game because of, of Marcus's dad. Just ironically, um, it, it's really when you get to this point in time, it's what opponents can fit what dates. Um, and obviously, uh, this was a this will be a good one for us to open with and, and test us just because no matter who we were going to open with. Um, although, are we telling them already, Patrick, we're in red uniforms? Yep, now you do. Okay. <laughs> St. Francis's new uniforms haven't arrived yet. So with, obviously, the labor shortages and things like that, they have to wear white. So if you're wondering why we're wearing red tomorrow night, that's why. <laughs> so there's your fun fact for the day. Uh, question in the back of Andy. Greg, what kind of memories do you think will be – kind of flying in the back of your head watching Bo get recognized Friday night? Well, um, I'll be – they'll have to videotape it for me because I'll be in the locker room at halftime probably talking to the team and how we can improve for the second half. But, you know, I, I go all the way back to when he was an assistant here. I, I was a camper. Um, you know, Steve Yoder, I believe, was the coach. Uh, it was right before he had taken the job at Platteville. Um, I was in eighth grade. Um my high school coach at the time, or the high school coach at Iowa Grant, was Steve Randall. Um, and he brought us as a group of eighth graders at that time up here to, to Coach Yoder's camp. And, and uh, Bo obviously knew Steve from um, Steve's days here at Wisconsin playing baseball and going to school here. But uh, that's my first vivid memory back to 1980. Four. I think Bo might have even already taken the job in Platinum and was just still helping out a little bit in the summer. So 83 or 84, right in that, that range. So that's my first recollection or, or chance to meet him. And, and obviously over the last, you know, almost 40 years, that's, uh, there's been so many fond memories and, and so many, um, learning experiences. I mean, I, I'm probably, uh, no doubt not sitting here today if it's not for Bo. Um, I'm not in college coaching if it's not for Bo. Um, so I, I just – obviously I owe him a, a huge debt of gratitude, as do many. But, uh, you know, I think there's – you just have so many fond memories. You know, the championship years in Platteville, the rebuilding the Milwaukee program, the, the 14 years here. So um, it's it's been – you don't take time maybe as much as you should, Andy, to reflect back and kind of cherish those times and those memories. We've had a chance to, since he's retired, you know, his wheels aren't spinning maybe as fast as what they once were. And he's, we've been able to reminisce a little bit on some, uh, some times of years gone by. There's been a few guys that uh, either we coached with or um, knew pretty well that have passed away that those always take you back in time and remembering the good times and memories of different people that uh, we both had contacts with. But uh, it, it's been it's been very uh, positive. Other than his golf game, when he plays with me on my team, needs to ramp it up a little bit. But he played pretty well. We won one of the events we were in this summer. So, uh, like I said, it's I think the further you get from that, you you um, embrace that and cherish those memories more and more and more because you realize how special those things were over the, over the course of the last, like I said, almost 40 years. Uh, right here. 
Coach, with a pretty young roster this season, um, how are you hoping to use youth towards your advantage this season? Well, I think the the biggest thing is we got to get experience, you know, and and um, there's going to be I think the depth that this team can have is a, is a benefit and a strength of this team. I don't know how deep we will go. Um, I don't know who will be in that, you know, nine, ten, eleven deep uh, roster or or rotation at times. It may change from game to game based on matchups and who's playing well and who's practiced well. So I think that's the exciting part is there's there are a lot of unknowns that even I don't know the answer to um, that I'm going to watch unfold in front of us and, and uh, have those guys you know, take advantage of the experience and, and uh, opportunities in front of them. And like I said, I know, like I said from the beginning, they're excited to, to get tomorrow night going and get out and play and show what they can do and, and learn. And I think this group is really connected. I see that togetherness and practice and how they compete and go after each other. And, um, and then when you know, the dust settles, they're their best of friends off the court as they walk off off the Cole Center floor. So that's been neat to watch kind of grow as we've gone through the preseason here. Uh, ben? Greg, after last year's musical chairs with your non-conference schedule, how easy was it to put together this schedule? And what were you trying to do with your five home games you had to fill out? Was there a plan that you tried to attack with that? Well, I think the biggest thing, Ben, is still dates uh, of trying to hit, you know, uh, correctly space those uh, game dates. Uh, when, what opponents are available, and obviously Mark Vanderwettering dives deeper into that than than I do. I kind of check in with him, you know, once a week during the the heavier time of the scheduling, and he'll watch all the analytics and the numbers and where, what the three year averages are and all the things he used to uses to select opponents. But um, yeah, I think the the biggest thing is just piece it together, knowing that we've got you know an in state game in in the Green Bay. We also have one in Marquette. Um, Obviously, the, the lost Maui that is going to take place now, moving to Vegas, um, and along with all the other the games. I don't know them all in exact order. I just know we got one tomorrow night. So, um, like I said, I think I've been so consumed with what this team can be and where it needs to continue to grow that I really haven't gotten too wrapped up in and who we're playing. It's just let, let's focus on us and, and try to make us as well prepared as possible. Um, back in Big Ten Media Days, you mentioned that you wanted to do a three-man committee at the center with Vogue, Carlson, and Crowell. Is that still the plan? And if so, what do each of them kind of bring that makes that work? Well, it's uh, I think plans are always subject to change, Abby. You know, I, I think Steve will start at the five, and and Chris will be, you know, help him there with with uh, that position. Ben can play there if needed, and if we need to go a little more mobile, a little smaller. I mean, it's going to depend on, on lineups. It's going to depend on situations. Ben's also played a lot at the four. Um, so I, I think with, with that combination of guys, it gives me a lot of flexibility, and that lends to some of the depth that I alluded to earlier. I think this team is developing. Um, so I, I think they're all, it, again, going back to what I mentioned about Jacoby with his experience coming from Wake Forest, I've seen the same thing with Chris, how he's helped our younger big guys and how fast he's picked up how we play specifically ball screens. Uh, I think he's picked it up really well. Uh, he understands who he is, and he understands who he's not, and he plays to his strength. And um, I think that's just that maturity has helped the younger guys as, as they've had to grow through some things here pretty quickly in, in the, not, or in the uh, preseason. Um, so again, I, what that looks like in terms of number of minutes, I mean, you can, you can try to have a plan. I've always tried to throw it down in pencil on how to balance minutes and all those things. And it looks great on paper, but usually the, the flow of a game dictates and, and mandates which way you go.